Hello and welcome to COVID-19 update from Nigerian Custom Broadcasting Network Asokoro Gusapi Village, Abuja, where we are going to bring to you the news updates of COVID-19. And today we have a lot of related news around the globe. I am Ajewale Kende. But before then, let's take a break. When we we'll come back, I'll be putting you through the daily updates. Think that the coronavirus disease is a hoax. If you do, then it is absolutely unfair to persons around you. While people are taking cautionary actions, others are unfortunately nonchalant about the situation at hand, endangering their loved ones and the general public. As the second wave of the pandemic hits the nation and the world at large, it is important to take proper precautionary measures to control and stop the spread of the virus. With statistics hitting alarming levels worldwide, economies have suffered greatly and masking up, regular washing and sanitizing of hands, maintaining social distancing and isolating is the new normal. The need to stay safe should be taken more seriously now more than ever. Please stay home if you feel sick or notice any symptoms related to the virus or call the emergency number 122. Remember, the key to staying safe is in our hands. Clean up, mask up and stay alive. This message is brought to you by the Nigeria Customs Broadcasting Network, NCBN. Hello Nigerians. Follow the instructions on social distancing. The irresponsibility of the few can lead to the death of many. Your freedom ends where other people's rights begin. The security agencies have risen to the challenges posed by this unprecedented situation with gallantry and I commend them. I urge them to continue to maintain utmost vigilance, firmness, as well as restraint in enforcing the restriction orders while not neglecting statutory security responsibilities. back uh, to COVID-19 update. Let's take today's update. According to the figures recorded by National Center for Disease Control, NCDC, a total number of 790 new cases are reported from 13 states across the country. Lagos have been 574, Rivers 83, Ondo 38, Ogun State having 31, and Oyo 23, Data recorded 10, FCT recorded 9, AKT 7, Edo State recorded 6, Oshun 4, Anambra 2, Bayesa 2, and Play 2 1. Until date, 179,908 cases have been confirmed, while 166,203 cases have been discharged, and 2,195 death has been recorded in Nigeria. Uh, moving on to the global scene, total new cases in the global scene is recorded at 630,656, while confirmed cases is recorded at 203,944,114, and total death recorded was 4,000,000. 
312,902. While vaccine doses administered were 4,394,596,000 doses. Well, in 684. And on the regional, America's recorded 79,146,270. Why in Europe, 61,730,332. Southeast Asia recorded 39,486,375. Eastern Mediterranean recorded 13,313,000. 951. And in, Af in Africa, where Nigeria surely belonged to, recorded 5,200,406, while Western Pacific recorded 5,066,046. This pace within the last one month that the, the Delta variant has started coming into Africa, which has become a worrisome to WHO mostly thinking about this data variant, the number has started skyping up even from the, uh, the, the, uh, the Mediterranean which have recorded low cases. Now they are meeting up with Africa which is now in 5 million above. Uh, so this is something of worry to everyone, even to the, to, to, the, to the professionals on this line, looking at the way the variant of, the, that is the data variant, is spreading across uh, the globe, especially at this particular period. So it becomes something that we need to tell ourselves that we, the coronavirus is still much with us. All safety, all protocols needs to be observed. Now, taking to the uh, headlines for today's news, uh, we take uh, the first one saying, stop managing COVID-19 cases. Ocean government wants private hospitals. The Ocean State government uh, warned private hospitals across the state to stop managing COVID-19 cases. A statement by the Commissioner for Information and Civic Orientation, Mrs. Funke Egbemode, said the government was deeply concerned about the tragic outcomes from professional infractions by some medical facilities and the lackadaisical attitude of citizens towards the COVID-19 pandemic. It said the virus was still very much around and every more deadly than in the first and second wave. Having examined the rising effect, as she said, of COVID-19 in the state in the recent times, the government of the Ocean State is worried that despite the worries, the various measures taken to ensure that the safety of its citizens, some individuals and institutions have continued to hate the spread of the virus through their flagrant disgrace of government guidelines. The government hereby wants private hospitals to stop attempting to manage COVID-19 cases in their facility. Also, rapid COVID-19 tests should be incorporated for preliminary medical examination for patients and quick referrals should be made to the designated government facility set up to manage COVID-19 cases when tests return positive. Private hospitals that go against the directive shall have their establishment shut and the owner's operating license withdrawn. This is a very good step taken uh, uh, by, by Ocean State government. I am very sure other states too uh, should take lead to this particular uh, instruction. We see a lot of people going to private uh, hospitals. We are even talking about the hospitals. What about the clinics? What about the pharmacies that begin to treat uh, COVID-19 cases? Not knowing that it's COVID-19, some people, some people will just go to pharmacies. I have a headache, I have cold, and the pharmacies even that are not licensed, we just prescribe, prescribe drugs for them and they will take it not knowing that that person is having uh, COVID-19. I think there should be a measure that will be that's supposed to be taken to make sure that people are going to the right place and people and the hands of affairs are making sure that people are getting result of what uh, is meant for them. Uh, now moving on to the next uh, story, WHO announces three new drugs for COVID-19 clinical trials. The three new candidate drugs are being tested in the latest phase of global solidarity uh, clinical trials to find effective treatment against COVID-19. The World Health Organization announced this on Wednesday. 
the therapies atesonate and metanib and inflation will be tested on hospitalized COVID-19 patients in 52 countries under the Solidarity Plus program. Speaking during a press conference in Geneva, WHO's Director General Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesu underscored the, crit uh, the critical need to find more effective and accessible COVID-19 therapies. The three drugs were selected by an independent panel for their potential in the reducing the risk of death in people hospitalized for COVID-19. They are all already being used to treat other conditions. Atosinate is a medicine for severe malaria. Amitinib is used for certain cancers, including leukemia, while the infliximab is used to treat Crohn's disease, arthritis, and other diseases of the immune system. Manufacturers IPCA, Novartis, and Johnson & Johnson donated the drugs for the trial. Solidarity Plus is the largest global collaboration among WHO's 194 member states, with thousands of researchers in over 600 hospitals participating. Finland is among the 52 countries taking part in 16 modern initial solidarity trials and contribute to the COVAX vaccine solidarity initiative. Two university hospitals in the Finland have been first worldwide to be the second phase. Anna Serkazin, the country's Minister of Social Affairs and Health, said clinical trials had a great potential to save life. This story is much awaited for in all over the globe, looking at some other drugs that can be used to make sure that uh, uh, it's not only the vaccine, but to make sure that there is a cure to this particular uh, virus that is seriously ravaging the world uh, currently. And moving on to the next story, slow vaccination fuel anger in Iran over unending pandemic. Iranians are suffering through yet another surge in the coronavirus pandemic. Their country's worse yet, and, hang, and anger is going at image of vaccinated Westerners without face mask on the right on TV while they remain unable to get their shot. Iran, like much of the world, remains far behind countries like the United States in vaccination. It's public, with only 3 million of its more than 80 million people having received both vaccine doses. But while some countries face poverty or other challenges in obtaining vaccines, Iran has brought some of the problem on its south. The story said, after Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, refused to accept vaccine donation from Western countries. The Islamic Republic has sought to make the shots domestically, though that process lags far behind other nations. The supply of non-Western shots remains low, creating a black market offering Moderna and Pfizer Biotech short for as much as $1,350 in a country where the currency, the Iranian real, is on the verge of collapse. Meanwhile, U.S. sanctions imposed on Iran mean the cash-trapped government has limited funds to purchase vaccines abroad. And even as the Delta variant wrecks havoc, feeling the country's already overwhelmed hospitals, many Iranians have given up on wearing masks and staying at home. The need to earn a living trumps the luxury of social distance. So sorry for uh, Iran looking at uh, what the country is supposed to benefit, but maybe due to one thing or their own reason, they refuse to take the Western uh, vaccination, looking that they need to produce this. Though we read yesterday to Nigeria is looking in the, that direction, making sure that the local production of this vaccine is made. There are other drugs that can be made in Nigeria and that can be given, administered to Nigerians. I think that is a good thing, but not to give uh, your countrymen and women a chance of uh, coming down of this uh, virus. So, before we continue on the, the story, let's take this short break. When we come back, I uh, shall continue with the other stories.
Good morning, sir. Kindly have a seat and put on your face mask. Okay. Oh, wow. What be me and you day here? I'll be the virus day here again. Oh, I'll do too much, Jari. Face mask. Oh, guys, say me you put on your face mask properly now. Now, malaria when I they feel like this. Ah. Oh, wow, for now. This protocol, protocol. Do you need water? Yeah, sure. Thank you, madam. Okay. <coughs> I beg, wear your face, man. I beg. I beg, wear your face, man. I beg. Seriously, guys, COVID-19 is real and you should adhere to all safety protocol. It is not a chin guard. It is not an eyeglass. It is not an earring or a wristband. It is not even an ID card. If you are taking it off, take it off completely from the elastic cord and do not touch the exposed area of the marks. Wash your hands, sanitize your hands, be responsible. Avoid stories that touch you. Oh. from that break. Uh, let's go straight to the next story. It was saying Cuba brings back doctors to battle COVID-19 crisis. Strain health care. Cuba is bringing back hundreds of doctors working abroad and converting hotels into isolation centers and hospitals in order to battle a COVID-19 crisis that is overwhelming health care and mortuary service in the part of Caribbean Highland. The country which managed to contain infection for most of last year is now facing one of the worst outbreaks worldwide, fueled by the spread of the more infectious Delta variant, even as it raises to vaccinate its population. Cuba's rolling seven-day average of confirmed COVID-19 cases has such eight fold within two months to 5,639,000 per million inhabitants, 10 times the world average. One in five tests are positive, four times the benchmark 5% positively rates cited by the World Health Organization. The seven-day average for confirmed COVID-19 death is around 52 per million inhabitants, six times the world average, although the real number could be much higher accounting for potential undiagnosed cases. The COVID-19 surge has come and Cuba's worst economic crisis in the decades that had already resulted in medicine shortage and long queues for scarcity goods that made implementing lockdown tricky. Official data show no more than 10 COVID-19 deaths daily in Guantanamo for those that suggesting underreporting in death from the respiratory disease. So far, a quota of Cuba's 11.2 million inhabitants have been inoculated with its two worst advanced vaccine that officials say are proving more than 90% effective in the phase three trials. So Cubans are calling back their doctors. Now look at Nigeria. We discovered that our doctors are on strike when we are recording a high number of the, uh, of this uh, uh, coronavirus, mostly the data variant. The Cuba are calling back their foreign doctors to come back home so that they can come and save the situation that the country is currently uh, going through. Well, we wish uh, them well as well. And we move on to the last story for today, which is saying that Canada planning COVID-19 vaccine passport for international travels. Canada is working to create a digital vaccine passport that would allow citizens to travel abroad and it should be available in the next few months. Government officials said this on Wednesday. Before the passport can be created, 
Ottawa needs to agree on a common approach with the 10 provinces and three northern territories, which are responsible for the inoculation against COVID-19. It's a key step forward in the ensuring Canadians will have the documents they need once it is safe to travel again, Immigration Minister Marco Medicione told the reporters. The European Union has vaccine passport system that allows people to travel freely within the region. A number of other countries are working on vaccine passports for both domestic use and international travel. Canada has one, has one of the best inoculation records in the world. As of July 31st, 81% people aged 12 and over had received one shot and 68% had been given two shots so far. And that is good for Canada looking at uh, the passport, though a lot of people are being scamming about taking this passport that you are going to not to allow a lot of people, especially freedom of movement from one place to the other just because of the vaccine. I want to tell you that I see some people that are having this desire, denier that there is nothing like COVID-19. And some people, because of political reasons, because of other reasons that they have, they are not yet in terms of taking this uh, vaccine. But in Nigeria, we are going to encourage us that we should take the vaccine, especially the one that the federal government is about to roll out, in, uh, I think, in the next uh, few days. So that uh, if you know you have not been vaccinated, it's time for you to be vaccinated so that this this uh, 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 pandemic can be out of our land. And this is where we shall be wrapping up today's edition of COVID-19 of the Staten with NCBN as we have a lot of programming for you. I am Ajewale Kende. Bye for now.